Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome your host, Kate Silverton. Good morning, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It is great to be back with you again in what promises to be another very exciting moment in the history of McLaren Automotive. To tell us more, let's please give a very warm welcome now to McLaren Automotive CEO, Mike Blewett. Very good to see you. Thanks Thank for you. having me back. This Thank time you. last year in Geneva, you launched the first model of the second generation of the Super Series, the 720S, a car that I think it's fair to say came with a, a weight of expectation. But it's certainly delivered for you this year, hasn't it? Yeah, it's been absolutely amazing. We've, um, we've had five-star reviews. We've won awards from the media all across the world. And so really quite humbling the, how well that car's been received in the market. And an interesting figure, we've delivered in six months more cars than we ever delivered in a year with the 650S. That's right. the, the scale of success with that car. And right now, we've got all the books filling the whole of 2018. So very exciting time. <laughs> no wonder you look happy. So in the summer, we yeah. have the launch of the 570S Spider, a car, of course, designed as much for the, a little bit of rain, but mostly for the sunshine. Beautiful car. Absolutely. And it's the third body style now in the, the Sports Series family. In fact, it's the fourth Spider we've launched in our, in our short history. And as we predicted, the Spider is already the most popular variant of the Sports Series family. Now, off-road, you've been busy. You've announced you're expanding your activities in GT racing too. Yeah, absolutely. And we're already very successful in, in GT3, winning championships all across the world. We're making great strides in, in GT4. Um, this year we've announced a 720S GT3 car will join the 570S GT4 on track. That car will be testing before the year's out and it will be with customers racing next year. It's a very exciting time for us. We've also launched a one make GT series exclusively for McLaren customers. And then to round all this out we're investing in developing young talent, young drivers. We have a young driver program and we'll have four drivers racing in British GT this year. Oh, well, that's a nice point then, to take us to the close of the year when you launched the McLaren Senna, a car that honours the memory of the legendary Ayrton Senna. Yeah, absolutely. And it's the, it's the ultimate road legal track car. We've just released figures for this car, 800 PS, 800 Newton metres of torque, 800 kilograms of downforce, more than any other production car. And all of that adds up to absolutely startling performance, 0 to 200 kilometers an hour in just 6.8 seconds. But probably the statistic we're most proud of is it's exceptionally light, less than 1,200 kilograms. And the first cars will be delivered in June this year to customers. Now, which explains the wonderful crowds here today. You will all remember, I'm sure, the last McLaren Ultimate Series, the McLaren P1, of course. And it was here three years ago, if my memory serves me correctly, that you first showed us the McLaren P1 GTR. Absolutely correct, yeah, and we went on to produce 50 customer cars, more than we originally forecast there would be demand for. And for many customers, that introduced them to the pure McLaren track program, and for some, it was their first step into, into racing with McLaren. And it's a story that we intend to repeat with the Senna. So, ladies and gentlemen, I'm very proud to present to you the ultimate track car, the McLaren Senna GTR. Senna 
GTR. Well, to tell us more about the McLaren Senna GTR, please welcome the Engineering Design Director, Mr. Dan Parry-Williams. Hey, Dan. Hi, You're a very happy man right now, aren't you? Congratulations. Thank you very much, and thank you, ladies and gentlemen. It's a really exciting day today for everybody at McLaren. So let's talk. You and your team are responsible for the P1, P1 GTR, the Senna, and now the Senna GTR. It's, it's an extraordinary looking car, hugely impressive statistics. So what are you most proud of? Well, as you said, this is a GTR, and a GTR is all about lap time. And lap time is all about power to weight ratio, lots of mechanical grip, and lots of aerodynamic downforce. And this car, has over a thousand kilos of downforce. That's over a ton of aerodynamic grip. Okay, so how have you achieved it? Well, when we started the design of the Senna road car, we always knew we were going to do a GTR version of the car. So we set ourselves these extraordinarily high aerodynamic targets. And in order to achieve that, we had to instill in the, in the base car a number of key features, which clearly informed the exterior design of the car. So let's look then at the similarities, those aerodynamic features that you've just been discussing. Can we start at the nose? Yeah, well, the first decision we made with the road car and the track car was to take the luggage compartments out of the front of the car and, and put it on the inside of the car. And the reason for that was to liberate space in the front of the car for this extremely aggressive active aero system that we had in mind. More obviously, you can see both cars have this very squared off large front splitter and that generates a lot, of, a lot of downforce. We evolved it from the road car to the race car to be even bigger and more aggressive in, in, in shape. And it works because air is trapped on top of it, pushing the splitter down onto the road surface. Doors are pretty special too, and again, they translate, they've moved from road to track. Yes, it's the same door, and uh, uh, we pushed the door in on the road car as far as we possibly could. And perhaps surprisingly, we did this for front downforce as well. The way it works is this, the front splitter with the active elements actually works like a, a wing on a Formula One car, except we have active control of the elements, which gives us a lot more power on the aerodynamics. The air is drawn underneath the front splitter, expands into the wheel arch and generates suction, pulling the splitter down onto the road. But that air has all got to get out somewhere. And it, it gets out through this slot between the door and the rear of the front tire. The bigger the slot, the more the downforce. And you mentioned the tire. That's one difference, isn't it? The tires on the GTR are wider. Yeah, the GTR uh, has this Pirelli slick tire, which is wider, as you say. It's also spaced out for even more mechanical grip and actually slightly further forward to maximize the size of this slot for the aerodynamics. And just another difference <coughs> is that you won't have the glass panel on the lower door on the track car. No, that's right. Actually, substituting the glass panel for a carbon fiber one saved us two kilos may not sound very much, but... To you. Remember, I said power to weight ratio. Two kilos is one and a half horsepower. So it's well worth having. So that's why that's gone. Okay, and um, the glass house, let's take a look at that now and tell us about that. Yes, this teardrop-shaped glass house is, is, is low drag shape. And um, we've evolved this from P1 through 720S and now the Senna and the Senna GTR. By having this low drag shape, it helps top speed on track. Also, it means that the rear wing can work in the best possible clean airflow. And you can see we have flush glazing on the side of this, as well as over the top surface, thanks to the small ticket window on the side. And this actually helps with cooling. So the air is smoothly forced round the side of the windscreen and aimed down towards the radiators in the side of the car. The doors, both cars, are both cut into the roof. 
Yes, that's right. Cutting the door into the roof this way actually liberates space inside of this, this streamlined shape by being able to remove some of the structure. It also means it's easier to get in and out of the car. So that's really important when you've got a, a helmet on. Yeah, but of course it is. Uh, can we talk about the rear now, Dan? Uh, it is sensationally low. It's really low. It's the lowest rear deck we've done so far. And again, that's there for aerodynamic reasons it, to reduce drag. It also means the rear wing can, again, work in best possible clean air. You can see on the top of the rear deck, we have these really aggressive looking louvers. They're not there for show. Nothing is there for show on a McLaren. These louvers actually suck the air through the radiators and improve the cooling performance even further. We've enhanced the active aero control system between the road car and the track car, and we've physically moved the wing much further rearward on the car, which generates a lot more aerodynamic load on the rear tyres. Okay, and coming back to the tyres, as you might expect, they're wider, the track's wider too, the back. Yeah, this is obviously to balance the extra mechanical grip that we're generating at the front of the car on the GTR. So we've spaced these out. Again, they're wider, as you say. And you can also see now this enormous rear diffuser at the back of the car. And this is necessary to balance the extra aerodynamic grip coming from the front mm. of the car. So Dan, few design engineers, I'm sure, would ever tell me that they feel that they have achieved perfection. I know you are very proud, though, of what you and your team have achieved with the Senna, with both uh, Senna's, but particularly the GTR, because this is still in development. Yes, I, I, don't, I don't know if anyone at McLaren ever, ever thinks they've achieved perfection because we're always, we're always striving for the best. But I am very proud of the team and um, there's, no doubt, there's no doubt that um, as we're in development, we're still chasing more and more performance. There's so much more to come from this car. We've already got mo more than 825 horsepower and more to come. So to be honest, it's going to be without doubt the fastest McLaren sports car on track that we've ever built. And that's thanks entirely to the passion and the enthusiasm and the energy and the talent of the team of working. So your thanks to them today. I'm sure Mike's going to join us. There he is. Hi, Mike. Uh, Hi. Another man that's got a smiling face today. Now, the Senna sold out before it had even launched in December. Correct. So I'm looking. This gentleman over here looks particularly keen. If he, if he would like to put uh, an order in for the GTR, can he still do so? Um, theoretically, yes probably best do it today. Um, we've already had a considerable amount of interest from customers who've anticipated this variant and we've limited production of this car to just 75 units. Okay, and this is not the end of the news for the Ultimate Series? No, we've already announced a car that we've codenamed BP23, a, a three-seater center seat homage to the iconic McLaren F1. And it's a car that takes the Ultimate Series in a very different direction. It's a, a hyper GT car. Um, and you'll see that car before the end of 2018. Okay. Mike, Dan, thank you very, very much. Thank Congratulations. You. And ladies and gentlemen, thanks to all of you too. And we'll see you next year. Thank you. Thank you very much.